Oh. Uh, don't buy cheap tools. I've heard raving reviews over, I say raving reviews, um, not bad reviews over the Parkside gear. Um, I've got a few Parkside tools, um, only used a couple of times. I've got this Parkside tool, which I've used six or seven times, and it's just, just gone kaput. So, lesson learned, don't buy cheap Parkside tools. Okay, this is what, this is what it is. So this is a multi-tool Parkside PMFW 310D2. It just does not want to know. So, don't buy cheap tools. Park side, pull your finger out. I know you're a, I think you're a, a partner of Bosch or something like that. Bosch is supposed to be quite good. Why are you making substandard tools? Anyway, guess I'll have to buy another or get sent a better product, Parkside. If I said Parkside enough, Parkside are shit. Yes, Parkside rubbish. End of rant. Hello everyone. I haven't uh, produced a, a, a vid, sent a, put a vid out for a while um, because um, nothing's really changed apart from uh, we're still viewing properties, um, still renovating this little place up while we're hunting for properties. Um, at the moment, um, we viewed, it feels like we've viewed hundreds, hundreds. And um, it would be nice if the estate agents were a bit forthcoming, um, in other words, truthful, um, because because they're not um, okay it's different in the UK UK you go to an estate agent you you agree a, a fee um, if you're selling your house you agree a percentage of the sale of the house say two three percent whatever the price may be you agree that and then the estate agent uh, markets your property and then you sell it and your fees are taken out of the price and then you pay solicitors fees, etc., etc. In France, it's um, the buyer has to pay the fees. Um, so that, in theory, makes the estate agent. Um, it, it make it basically they're employed by you. So it's a bit weird. So, for example, on a 300 400,000 euro property you'll pay estate agent fees estate agent fees up to 20,000 plus um, which is it's, it's crazy um, it, it's ridiculous and some of the prices they're coming out at I mean you I mean we've looked at properties now which are um, late 300s um, whereby we've got to pay 16,000 euros and you go to see the property and you think why am I paying this amount of money for this shit heap and it's, they're not looked after they're not built you know, I won't say they're, they're built substandard because generally they're old properties that we're going to see so there's going to be some issues um, but um, yeah, but you know, even they're not even looked after, and people are commanding, or the, the owners are commanding three hundred plus for a, a four bed 
property, okay, may have a hectare of land and a couple of outbuildings, but uh, uh, they're not worth it. People, don't, I think they've cashed in on the COVID bandwagon, whereby all the Parisians are starting to move a bit of uh, into the south, southern regions, and um, buying up property, so they've got a um, a place where they can go at the weekend, and that's what's jumped, the, um, escalated the, the the prices, which are it's crazy. And uh, now, just now, we're starting. To starting to see a drop in prices um, because no one's buying them we've seen now uh, p uh, properties on the market that we viewed a year ago and they're still there at the same price yet some of them are coming down so estate agents need to be re realistic over here and they uh, and the owners of the property need to be a bit, need to be realistic i mean we visited in um uh, Saint Boudel, which is just south of uh, Mayenne, a, a lovely looking property from the outside. They want 450,000 euros for it. It's got a um, like a gite on the um, next to it, which is nicely finished down. It's it's not finished per se. It's been used as a as a sleepover place for kids or whatever it may be. Um, but then you look closely and you look at the gite side of things. And they're not trees growing out of the, the floor inside. So, you know, I mean, that's alarm bells. Trees growing inside. Yeah, that's not good. And then when you go into the main, uh, the main property, a maison de met, uh, um, on the outside, it's beautiful. As soon as you walk through the door, you've got rotten, rotten beams, rotten wood, um, the uh, electrics sub substandard, the FOSS septic is substandard. Um, so you need to pay, because it's a, a Maison de Met, you don't pay in excess of 20, 25,000 euros just to get the electrics redone. And that's not even looking at the roof. So, and then you've got to pay 10, 15,000 euros for, for the FOSS septic or microstation to be updated. So it all adds up, and I, I think, I think they're a bit delusional over here at the moment, where property prices are concerned. Estate agents, I don't trust them one bit, but um, we've got to start somewhere. Um, it's like this house we're doing up. We we arrange for an electrician. We sign the devis and everything. We arrange the electrician to come in in July. What is it? It's, it's the what is it, what is it today? It's, I think it's the fourth of October. Fourth of October. Still no show. Um, the wife rang him last week. Oh yeah, I'll be. I'll be. I can't get anyone in there. Um, it's, it, they don't realise they're holding up people's lives. We can't move in until the electrics are done. So um, yeah. Uh, um, there's a distinct lack of tradesmen over here, and they, because of the, the, the lack of tradesmen, they're commanding a high price. Um, yeah, so, which is, a pro it, it, it's crazy. But, um, yeah, apart from that, all is good. I can't believe what's happening in the UK at the moment. It's crazy. Or have I got a delivery? No, not yet. Yeah, so demand an election now. I know there's a there's a petition out there on the government website. I think it's up to five hundred thousand at the moment. We need people to sign that petition. I know it's, you, again, you're probably flogging a dead horse, but I mean you've got to get rid of this government. They're killing the country. Uh, they killed it with Brexit, and they they're killing it with a financial. Um, plans they tried to put into place and now suddenly reversed but hey uh, it's one of those things one of those things anyway I'll um, I might put a few of the odds and sods on this on this video but um, I can't really show you anything I, I suppose I can yeah, I'll show you what I've done at the, done today with either using a hammer and chisel. So because this tool 
Feierabend. So this, this, I uh, suppose you call it a palmate, was rotten. I've taken all of the rotten stuff out, cut most of it, cut most of it with that parkside crappy tool, and then I've had to go at it with a hammer and, hammer and chisel. So that's good wood now. The rotten stuff is out. So I'll, I can at least screw something to that. I've got to fill all this in. Um, because it's it needs filling in so bear in mind this is the bathroom so I mean this is all the crap that uh, came out of it it's all rotten so yeah I've just got to get some aqua board up, up on here well it's like aqua board it's like a board that you put on the on the wall that uh, you can tile onto so I've removed all this edging that's got to come out, or oh, has come out now. So all I've got to do is put that board in place. And yeah, it'll be done. I have an inspection hatch down there, which is going to be filled in. Plaster board is over. So yeah, we're getting there slowly. Yeah. One final thing, um, what do you guys use as finish plaster over here? Um, because I'm lost. The missus got a bag the other day and I tried tried mixing it like I would normal, normally fix finish plaster or something like that. And um, as soon as I finished it, I wet the walls, you know, get ready, got, add my trowel in, put my trowel in to the mix and it was solid literally five minutes it, it was solid so what do you use um, as finished plaster over here because I, I need to skim some walls at some stage um, wrong, I'm frightened of getting, <laughs> getting the wrong plaster so um, any ideas guys put some in the comments um, I need to find some soon uh, or else I don't want to hire someone to do it there's no way um, we're going to try and do most of the stuff uh, ourselves. So, put some comments in. Um, let me know. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Um, thanks for watching. Um, I know it's not a lot, but you know, it's a little hobby. Um, click the like. Please, click the like. At least I'll get something on the analytics. Might be good. Uh, subscribe if you want to. And... Um, Thanks for watching. Take care now. Bye. Hello, YouTube friends, followers, YouTube general. Hope everyone's okay. Uh, there's been a bit of a delay on my posting up a, a video. Um, been very, very busy. Um, I haven't got a lot of footage for you. Just. Uh, this is a combination of a couple of videos uh, I've, I've placed, mainly me whinging. Um, but um, yeah, we, we, we've finally got an electrician into our house. Um, three and a half months after he promised he would be there. Um, but uh, he's, very, he's, he's, he's a subcontractor, so he's not the actual electrician that uh, provided the quote. He's, he's been subcontracted to him. Uh, his name's Daniel, a uh, very nice chap. Uh, this is where Google Translate comes in handy for me, um, and and him as well. So and, and we get on, get on pretty well. He's 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 very funny, uh, determined uh, as well. Um, so it's it's nice to see that. Should be for the cost. Um, so that's a positive. That that's all good. Um, I may have said previously that we were going to view a couple of properties uh, a couple of weeks ago we've viewed them properties and uh, the first one uh, the land was fantastic pool everything it's got everything the property itself a bit disjointed um, and it's supposed to be high-end we didn't see high-end um, perhaps our standards are a bit too high um, I, I don't know. I don't know. It just 
I, we both loved the outside of the of the area uh, of the property but the inside just didn't do it for us and then we visited a, a second property which um, is about two miles away uh, on the other side of the, of the main road and um, it literally looks down onto the Mayan River uh, it's quite high up from the Mayan so there's no risk of flooding and that place is um, it's, it's an old farm uh, been converted it's got it, it's basically a three bedroom house uh, with um, a jeet about 50 50 feet away from it and um, we both loved it it doesn't have everything that we want but it ticks most boxes um, and we've been hunting for so so long so uh, yeah yeah we, we put an offer in wasn't accepted first um, and then the wife she said um, I want this property and I said well if that's the case then we submit another another offer um, so we submitted another offer and that was accepted and um, now we start the long laborious process of uh, going through um, property ownership again um, so that could take three months so what are we now nearly what are we now october the 24th so we could be in by february <laughs> um but in the meantime we've got uh, uh, the little two bed place that we're doing up so that that's moving on slowly um we were hoping to be in there by november um it, it's still a possibility but it's a long shot I'd rather move only once without uh, getting our storage, all of all of our stuff out of storage, and then move into the the, the property we've we've we're in the process of buying, and um, and just do do the one move, and then that'll be it. Um, saves a lot of backache and ball ache. Uh, so, yeah. Um, what else? Um, Oh yes, I've started helping out at, at a local chateau. Uh, it's absolutely amazing place. Um, it's just helping out here and there and whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, the people are fantastic. Uh, it's a mixture of um, uh, French and English um, speakers on site, and it, it's 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 great for me. It's two days a week, it gets me out, um, gets me mixing so yeah um, really enjoying it hard work though uh, really hard work I, I think um i've been averaging when i'm when i'm there i've been averaging um 20 kilometers a day uh walking uh, around the site that type of thing and uh with me that that's some going because uh, i don't know whether i've told you in the past i had a a big big accident on a motorcycle and um, yeah and my legs were shattered and uh, and my back and one of my shoulders and both arms and ribs and etc etc and um, in a coma yeah hospital for seven months and then learning to work walk for another seven eight months after that and then corrective surgery after that, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so considering my past, that's a hell of an, hell of an achievement for me. Um, and okay, I, I suffer with the pain every now and again, but it's, 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 um, it's all about focus. If I'm focusing on a, on a job, then you don't feel anything. You, you, you focus on the job on hand and then worry about the consequences afterwards. You just got to be aware of any new pain that appears. So yeah, it's, 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 it's all good. So that's where we are. Catch you later.